Hi everyone, my name is Elena Huerta. I'm an artist, healer, and counselor. I'm here today to talk about crystals, the use of crystals. How, how do you begin using crystals? I was asked a question last week, how do I start to know a crystal? If you have found one that has resonated with you, you maybe you found it in a store, maybe you found it walking around. There are many ways that you can become acquainted with crystals, with their properties and with how to use them. To start out, I've got my lovely rose quartz here to assist me in this video. Beautiful piece, got it down at Follow Your Heart in Canoga Park. Now, whenever you first get a crystal, you have been drawn to this crystal for a reason. You've been drawn to this crystal because it resonates with your body. Crystals actually put out an energetic vibration, and whenever our energetic vibrations tend to gravitate towards certain vibrations of other crystals, because in a sense we are crystalline, we are what is referred to as liquid crystals. Whenever we are drawn to crystals that resonate with our vibration, they may have some kind of knowing, some kind of affirmation, energy that our body is craving right now, and that's why we've been drawn to them. Now, whenever you first acquire a crystal, it is best to cleanse it the best way is with water. To be completely honest, crystals love water. I've tried sage in the past, incense, you know, I've taken baths with crystals around the edges, the rim of the tub, and tried to cleanse them with sage, and the crystals just always tend to jump out of my hands or fall into the water somehow. They just slide in there. They love the water. They know that that is the most effective way to cleanse them. However, there are some crystals like gypsum, selenite, if they're not tumbled, they might dissolve. So you want to be careful with those type of crystals and you can experiment with it or check online or you can even ask me, I might be able to help you out and figure out if the crystal that you have is water soluble or not. And most aren't. Tumbled stones tend to be a lot less soluble than grainy stones especially because they have a polish over it to kind of complete the sheen, to complete the solidity of the crystal. If you do have a crystal that is not water soluble, there are a couple ways that you can still cleanse it. As I mentioned earlier, you can also use sage, you can use incense, some type of smoke, you can fan it on the crystal, you can blow it on the crystal, you can even blow your breath, can cleanse the crystal. As as long as what you're doing is intending to cleanse the crystal of any energies and align the crystal and yourself with divine will, which means highest purposes, the crystals, you'll find that they start to react if you use them under any circumstances other than divine will, like a love spell. You can't force somebody to fall in love with you, but you can intend that say rose quartz it's the quartz of it's a the stone of love it's called the love stone sometimes but you can intend that the energies of this crystal resonate with somebody else for their highest will and it will crystals they send off powerful energetic vibrations we're attracted to them for a reason and we're walking on crystals on a daily basis everywhere we go we get a mix of different minerals a mix of different chemicals that have form together to form these beautiful rocks underneath our feet, underneath the earth, the surface of the earth, even on the surface of the earth. And it's a beautiful thing. They're very healing. They're part of why being in nature is so healing. All of her energetic vibrations combined with the minerals that our bodies absorb. And to get to know your crystal, you might want to start out by, if you see here, I've been holding the rose quartz in my left hand. Now your left hand the left side of your body is the feminine side. It is the receptive part of your body, your receptive half of your body. So whenever you sleep with a crystal, you can hold it in your left hand. Uh, on a side note, you, if you do sleep with a crystal, you can also sleep with it under your pillow is also a great thing that I like to do whenever I would like to incorporate some of those energies in my subconscious. And the best thing that you can do 
is work with them is you can carry the crystal around on you you can carry it in your pocket you can have a little pouch maybe that you're wearing with the crystal on it you can put it in your shoe if you want to there are so many ways that you can learn about these crystals personally one of the things that i like to do is i will sit with a crystal and i will try to feel its energy i'll try to feel the way that my body changes, the way that my energy changes, my emotions, mental bodies change while holding this crystal. And that's a great way to begin to try to figure it out. Another thing that I like to do is hold the crystal, again, in the left hand, the receptive hand, and you can go and do research on the crystal and learn about what other people have experienced. And in the combination of holding the crystal and actually being with it and learning some concrete information, something that you can really mentally digest about the crystal, you can kind of connect the two. You can relate them to each other. You can say, oh, well, this person says it feels this way, but I'm, I'm not feeling that maybe. Or they feel this, but and wow, that's, that's right on. That's what I'm feeling right now. It really depends on yourself. It depends on how you resonate with the crystal. And there, like I said, there are so many great ways to learn about crystals. You can talk to people who have experimented with crystals, but quite honestly, the best way to learn about these beautiful angelic beings, these beautiful energies, is just to be with them, to feel them, to explore them. And I th I'm very grateful to my friend for asking me this question, inspiring me to make this video. I hope that this all, that this information helps you on your journey. And again, uh, my website is www.crystalangelhealing.org. I do do healing sessions with crystals because I have resonated with crystals very well. I've done a lot of research. I've done research in the scientific aspect on their different molecules and how the shapes and the energies and the aspects all are combined through the chemicals and the way that the crystals are made. Like obsidian, for instance. Obsidian is very useful for sudden traumatic pain. Like if you get hit with a ball or something. If you get hit with a ball and you've got a little bruise, you can put obsidian on the bruise and obsidian, because of the way it's formed, it is formed by a volcano. It's formed by a volcanic magma which has dried and dried really fast. That's why it's so shiny. That's why it's so sh it's got such a sheen to it. Obsidian is so it's a wonderful stone. It's highly absorbing. It but when it, the reason why I am speaking of this particular stone for the bruise is because because the stone, the manner of which it was created, was so quick, it also it helps to alleviate pain in quickly rendered injuries. It helps to absorb pain. It literally sucks sucks the energy of the pain right out of you, right into the crystal. And a lot of crystals do this, and this is why I say it's so important to cleanse them, because quartz is very absorbing. Any variety of quartz, any stone that has quartz in it, rose quartz, yes, it's very absorbing, as well as being the love stone. And it's very important to take into consideration that these are beings. This is a piece of consciousness that is here to help you heal. It absorbs things that you may not want from your body and also at the same time is instilling information based on the molecules of the crystal. Like certain crystals, like a hexagonal molecule crystal will act differently than a crystal that is made with triangular shaped molecules. And in this way, we have come to find out how these crystals can be used and applied practically in everyday life, in healing, in dealing with symptoms of illness. And it is such a wonderful thing to have all of these different energies. There are so many different types of crystals and 
if you're looking for a certain crystal, if you want to experiment and try to figure out what kind of energies suit you best, walk into a spiritual store, walk into a bookstore which sells crystals. There's a, I live in Newbury Park nearby, there's a Thousand Oaks book, uh, bookstore named The Hummingbird and Humbee, and they have a bunch of wonderful crystals there. Ventura, Oxnard area has a bunch of spiritual bookstores, a bunch of new age stores that they carry crystals and you can go in there and find out which ones resonate with you and those will be the best ones for your healing and learning needs. Again, my name is Elena Huerta. Thank you for tuning in and for watching this video. On an, It's just meant to be kind of an introduction on using crystals and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I am available for assistance, for advice. I love answering questions. If you have another question that I could possibly make a video out of, I would love to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are amazing. And have a beautiful day.